a few days ago, NetGate released PFSense Plus 25.07. So after waiting a few days and checking the forums, seeing what's happening, it's time to upgrade. Let's get into that right after this. So this is the official blog post from NetGate explaining everything new in PFSense Plus version 25.07. And as you can see, this blog post has, a release, has been released a few days ago. And I always wait a few days before I actually upgrade software for critical components in my infrastructure. I'm not just watching the threads and the feeds from NetGate and as soon as there is a new version, I am always immediately going to install that. That's not the way I do management and maintenance in my network, in my uh, infrastructure. And I would strongly suggest you guys take the same approach regarding upgrading software versions for critical components, right? Again, as you can see here, this was released on the 4th of August. We are here at the 9th of August. I waited a few days. I checked the forums at NetGate and I checked the threads on Reddit. I checked communities on the internet. What is the major experience from people upgrading to this version? There are no surprises there. Is there something broken? Can I expect it to go smoothly? And I try to learn from those experiences before I decide, okay, now I feel confident enough to upgrade this major component in my infrastructure because it is unacceptable, of course, that if I upgrade, if I start the upgrade, something breaks and now everything of internet wise is broken in the, in the house or for you in your company, right? That's not something we want. So again, my advice is wait a few days, check the community to see if there are surprises there. Unless of course you have a security incident and you need to upgrade at once, but then try to be in control of that upgrade. So let's get back to this blog post and NetGate explains what the new features are, improvements are, and how you can upgrade. If you follow this, you will have all the information to do the upgrade. And again, don't just upgrade to upgrade, make sure that you understand why you are upgrading and what it will do to the infrastructure in your environment. So. New feature wise, one of the new things I am really looking forward to is this new PPPoE driver. I have a very fast WAN speed from my ISP. It's a gigabit WAN speed. And I know that when I maximize that bandwidth, I see the CPU on my PFSense uh, box, my PFSense hardware struggle sometime, right? And that has to do with that PPPoE driver, which now have been rewritten and is very much improved performance wise starting this version of PFSense. So this is one of the things I'm really looking forward to. This will, of course, lower the load on the CPU uh, in my PFSense box. And if you have a PFSense box with limited CPU resources, this is something you should really look into because it will help if you're, of course, using PPPoE for your internet, uh, from your internet provider. Uh, this will, you will benefit a lot from this new PPPoE driver. Of course, there are other things in here as well. We can see that there are some fixes for that version of the DHCP server. Also, KEA, that's the DHCP server, which is the new version in PFSense. Uh, the old one, it has been deprecated. So it is still in place, you can still use it, and but it will not be developed any longer. And somewhere in the future, it will not exist in PFSense anymore. But for now, it is in there, you can use it, but it is deprecated. So this is something maybe to, um, to, to migrate to, right? It is now stable enough to migrate to. I have seen some forum threads which can confirm that it is working perfectly fine. There were some hiccups when uh, NetGate introduced this in previous version the first time. So this is something to keep an eye on. Net64, this is for IPv6. I am not doing IPv6 in my in my lab, in my home, uh, and I'm not doing it from my ISP. So I will not benefit from that. But if you are doing something with IPv6 in your network, this is something you will benefit from. It is now fully supported in PFSense. 
of course we have the release node so and and the installation steps to upgrade if we go by the release notes we can see it is this is the official netgate documentation it is very extensive you can also see what security fixes has been applied and if i'm going through this list it always surprises me uh, how little security fixes there are in pfSense. It is a very stable platform from uh, from uptime perspective, but also from the security perspective. We have patch management in there, so if so, something needs to be patched, you can just go into the system and update it with the new patch uh, supplies from NetGate, so that's, that is very good. Backup and restore, of course, there has been some fixes in there as well. So. Let's get into the actual upgrade for my production version of PFSense Plus. So here we are looking at my PFSense Plus installation. This is my production environment. I have several packages running in here. I have several OpenVPN and WireGuard connections running in here. So I want everything to just work when I install, when I upgrade it, basically, right? So. As we can see here in the dashboard, it is already presenting me, let's try to enlarge this a little bit. It is already presenting me with that new version, right? It has detected that there is an upgrade and it is telling me every time I log in in here, uh, I can see that there is a new version, so I need to install that. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. But before we do that, and if you have been following my channel, you know that I am very keen on having backups before I start the installation or upgrade process so the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have a backup of the configuration that's the way to do that is go to the diagnostic option in the menu and then click on backup and restore and then you can download the configuration as xml i would strongly suggest that you do this before starting the upgrade right make sure that you have access to that configuration file and if Worst comes to worst, well, you need to reinstall PFSense. You need to reinstall it using that online installer. You can watch a video I posted not long ago on how to do that. Using that installer, you can then import this configuration in there and try the installation again, right? So make sure you have a configuration backup before you start this. Now the the nice thing is I am using PFSense Plus. That means I have access to boot environments because this is running on a ZFS file system. It's just running ZFS in here. Let me find that disk usage widget real quick. And that's, here we are. And now if I scroll down, we can see that I am running ZFS. I am running it on just one disk, but that's fine. So the way that, or because I'm running ZFS, I have the option now to create a snapshot before I start the upgrade. And that will give me the flexibility that if something goes wrong, I can try to recover it from the snapshot I created before starting the upgrade. And that means it will be back online running version 24.11, right? And the nice thing is that when you have PFSense Plus, the option of creating those snapshots, that is already enabled. So we can find that at system and then boot environments. Let's click on that. And you can see here that I'm actually running this PFSense installation for some time. I have a few snapshots in there, few boot environments in there and of course, the latest default one, that's 24.11. And every time you execute an upgrade, you do an upgrade on your PFSense Plus, it will automatically create that snapshot for you. You can do that manually, of course. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let the system take, take care of that. So let's go to the dashboard. And as you can see here, I am running a few packages. Now, the best practice from NetGate is that to deinstall, uninstall those packages before you start the upgrade. And if you uninstall them, that means um, you have the option to keep the configuration for those packages as on your PFSense. And if you reinstall those packages after you've upgraded, all the configuration will be back. But I'm feeling lucky today, so I will leave those packages on my system. Of course, you make sure that you know and you 
you know really well what you're doing if you do this the same way I do and that is leaving those packages and doing the upgrade while those packages are in there. Let's click on that cloud icon there. And it is retrieving the information. As you can see here, I have the previous table version selected. So that's the branch I'm checking out. But I want to have the current stable version and that's the new version 25.07. So I'm going to select that and let it retrieve the information. Wait for it. All right. It has detected that there is indeed the new version. It is available now. The current installed system, that's 24.11, and I can now confirm the update. So I will go ahead and click on this button and see what happens. All right, the update system is initialized. So it is now starting the upgrade process. So let's wait for this process to finish. Don't leave the screen, leave the screen running this tab running in your browser don't disconnect it don't close it this is the way you can monitor the progress of uh, the installation of course if you have a display connected a monitor connected to the physical appliance the physical box you're running pfSense on that's even better but this is a place where we will monitor the upload the upgrade process and there we are everything has been updated all the packages have been updated and the system is going to reboot and during this reboot the system will of course install the updates and do some housekeeping so it can take a while for the system to come up give it time don't reboot the system don't hard reset it just give it some time and leave this window open because it will try to refresh and reach the interface for pfSense so let's wait for the system to finish the actual update. All right, and here we are. Let's log in. The system is rebooted. The page has been refreshed automatically. And now when I log in, I can see that it is updated to that latest version of PFSense Plus 25.07. Just to make sure that I have all the latest versions of the installed packages, I will go into system and click on package manager. Of course, the system will do this automatically when it upgrades, uh, right? It will pull in the newest versions of all those packages in there. But I want to make sure that everything is fine. So I go in here manually to check if there are updates. There are no updates. Everything is looking OK. And then the next thing I will do is click on system and go to patches itself because the patches package, that's uh, something that will help you out when there is a small patch for PFSense and not a major release, right? So let's click on patches and see if there are patches. Now for this version of PFSense Plus, there are no patches at the moment. So we are in good shape. And that's another successful upgrade for PFSense Plus done. Make sure that you always have a configuration backup. You always have the installation ISO or the online installer. I will leave a link to that video uh, below. Uh, so if, if there is something broken after you try the upgrade and you need to reinstall, you have a configuration which you can just restore using that online installer and then you're good to go. Of course, if your PFSense is virtualized, you can now just take a snapshot, start the upgrade process. If something breaks, you can just refer to that snapshot. That makes life a lot, a lot easier. I can imagine that you guys are running PFSense in home lab environment. Now you are running that virtualized. I am doing that as well. But my production PFSense is always a physical box. So I made sure that I have the configuration backup and also USB sticks prepared with that online installer in case I need to restore. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something new in this video. If you have comments, leave them in the comment section below. And while you are there, don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons below the video. In that way, you will get a notification every time I post a new video. And for now, take care and see you in the next video. Bye.